Now, our foundation scripture will be Mark chapter 11, verse 24. It reads like this. God eagerly pursues us, and this is even in the Old Testament. As we read, God says we're already healed. That applies to everybody. For God bought you with a high price. You must honor God with your body. Hi, and welcome to Wherever He Leads. I'm Chris Nauman, Executive Director for the Clarity Clinic Pregnancy Center, and I have a very special guest with me today, Miss Brittany Farber, and she's a Christian entrepreneur and a wonderful mother, and um, she's also a graduate student of Grace College. And, um, you know, as we are preparing for the Christmas season, today's episode we want to discuss a little bit about the birth of Jesus Christ and also touch on the impact unplanned pregnancies have in families. And so, you know, it's a changing season. We have just came out of fall and we're heading towards winter. And, um, you know, people are in seasons in their life. And people go through times and seasons in their life where different events will impact their life and impact their families. And so I want to start today's show first in prayer, and then we're going to jump right into the book of Ecclesiastes. So, Father God, we just thank you for our listeners out there. We thank you, Father God, that um, you ordain the times and the seasons in our life to capture our attention, to draw us to you. And so today, Father, I thank you for Brittany being on this show. I thank you for the listeners out there, Father. And I pray that each and every person within the sound of my voice on this show today would be impacted by this episode to draw to you for any situation or circumstance in their life and have the hope that only Jesus Christ can give an assurance in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to open our Bibles up today to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and I'm going to start with verse 1 but then I'm going to jump in and focus on verse 11. So if you have your Bible at home um, just open up to that book and I love this because we're in a season that we all celebrate in so many different ways. Um, it says here, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, mm -hmm. a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. Or excuse me, a time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. But verse 11 is where I really want to focus. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. Don't you just love that? Mm -hmm. Everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. Wow, that's big. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from the beginning to the end. You know, as we touch on unplanned pregnancies today, um, Brittany has experienced that situation in her life, and she's going to share just a little bit about the struggle she went through. And, um, you know... As we prepared, I thought, you know, what we think in our, in our life, the season that's unplanned, doesn't mm -hmm. take God by surprise. He knows right. the end from the beginning, so there's nothing that, that surprises God. In fact, he knows how we're even going to um, come out of something. Yes. And that brings us a hope to trust in him. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I just would like to open up with you sharing a little okay. bit about maybe some of the struggles or... Um, you know, how that had impacted your life. Okay. 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 Um, when I first found out that I was expecting, I was in college like a lot of young women are. And at the time, I was not a Christian, and I didn't know Christ as deeply as I know him now. And when I first found out, there was a lot of surprise. Oh, sure. And fear. Oh, sure. And being in denial, yeah. wondering how and why this is happening to me, and I felt very lonely. 
-hmm. and wondered if my plans were ever going to happen and work out how I had wanted them. And something else that I really struggled with was wondering how and what people were going to think of me. My mm -hmm. friends, my family, the activities that I was involved in at school. And I got so angry and I felt so desperate to find an answer that I just, I felt really shameful. And it was embarrassing because you can only hide a pregnancy for so long. Oh, yeah. And I felt like I was wearing the consequence of my actions, and it was very hard. Mm, that's mm. excellent. You know, I know at the pregnancy center, there's so many girls that come in there that are. feel exactly the way you feel. Mm -hmm. There's even parents that come in, you know, Christian parents that come in with a son or daughter, and they feel that same yeah. shame, fear, mm -hmm. denial, mm -hmm. can't believe this happened. You know, how did this happen? Right. Um, you know, where do you go with all that? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not alone. There's so many young girls that go through this. And I want to include the guys as well. Mm -hmm. And I also want to include the children that come out of this situation because they are impacted in a great way. But, you know, there's different women in the Bible that had the same situation you're, you were in. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about um, the birth of Jesus and how Mary was impacted at first and you know we're getting close to celebrate the Christmas season here and we all honor the birth of the of the Christ mm -hmm. child and um, I want to just jump into um, Luke chapter 1 verse 28 and the angel Gabriel appeared to her and said greetings favored woman the Lord is with you and verse 29 says confused and disturbed confused and disturbed Mary tried to think what the angel could mean <laughs> don't be afraid Mary the angels told her for God has decided to bless you Ooh, I love that you will become pregnant and have a son and you are to name him Jesus Verse 32, he will be very great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Yes. Can you imagine getting that news? <laughs> I mean, when a woman comes mm -hmm. in and they have a positive test mm -hmm. result, that blows them away. But can you it imagine does. an angel coming in and telling you that? And then um, Matthew 2, 23 says, Look, the virgin will conceive a child and she will give birth to a son and he will be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, no matter what situation or circumstance, God is with you. Yeah. He's always with you. And I'm sure when you came to this point, you were like, mm. okay, I have all these different waves of feelings. I mean, yeah. you know, you know, uh, pregnant women, we get emotional. Yes. Things kind of bounce <laughs> back and yeah. forth. But you had waves of denial, waves of frustration and anger and bitterness. and. Tell me a little bit about your situation and how you um, started out, you were, you were feeling isolated and mm -hmm. lonely, mm -hmm. and um, you know, how that situation you were in was different than most. Okay. That would be good to share. Okay. Um, well, I was 20 years old when I was pregnant, and I was beginning the very first semester of my second year in college. So I was very new into the program, and his father, my son's father, is not from Iowa. Mm, okay. So when I found out I was expecting, I was wondering how we were going to do this. Just from the very basic relational standpoint of having a mother and having a father and being able to provide that solid family unit mm -hmm. you know, for a, a child. There's no boundaries. There are no boundaries. Outside of marriage, there's no boundaries. Yeah. And even in the legal system, when you mm -hmm. think about how um, the, the legal aspects of when a family um, separates through divorce, mm -hmm. a marriage, um, you know, there's state consequences there legally. But when you don't yes. have that marriage commitment, mm. it is like Russian roulette. Yeah. And that's kind of how you, you were tossed into that yes. salad in, mm -hmm. and of life and just, you know, yeah. had to figure out 
how I'm going to get on top of this thing and, and yeah. make my plans happen. What happened? Um, the hardest part of that entire situation was coming to terms with the fact that I was going to have a child with someone that I normally would not have chosen to. Mm. So it was challenging making that conscious effort to try to establish you know, this lifestyle when you wouldn't have gone there in the first place. Sure. So there was a lot of misdirection of how to handle the situation and what my role as the single mother was and how were we going to create this you know, unit of, of love mm -hmm. and view the situation as a blessing. And it sounds yeah. like even for your child, there mm -hmm. was like an identity, a, identity aspect about yes. this where, mm -hmm. you know, who do I identify with? Um, mom's here, dad's there. Um, right. You know, a child is forced to adapt to different yes. um, families, adapt to different values, adapt to different environments. Mm -hmm. um, and they're innocent in the situation. Yeah. And, and that, that pierces my heart. I have someone very dear to my heart that has been forced into that type of situation where they have to adapt to two different environments. Right. And so, um, you know, there's another woman in the Bible mm. and that um, I think this mm -hmm. story needs to be said. Yes. Um, let's turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 1, verse 22. And I am, again, in the New Living Translation today. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Throw all the newborn Israelite babies, baby boys, into the Nile River. The Nile River, the mm -hmm. biggest river, one of the biggest rivers. How would you think mm -hmm. about that? But you may spare the baby girls. He did this as he thought the Israelites were becoming too powerful. Exodus chapter 2. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Mm -hmm. She saw how beautiful this baby was and kept him hidden for three months. It sounds like you with your pregnancy yeah. you only can hide it for three months. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, was like, how am I going to do this? But when she could no longer hide him, she put the baby in a basket and sent it down the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. Isn't it neat how God always brings an opportunity? Yes. Verse 5, Soon after this, one of Pharaoh's daughters came down to bathe in the river, and her servant girls walked along the riverbank. When the princess had saw the little basket among the reeds, she told one of her servant girls to get it for her. As the princess opened it up, she found a beautiful baby boy. His helpless cries touched her heart. He must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Isn't that interesting? She knew this was one of the little boys who her father had ordered to kill. Mm -hmm. So she knew whatever she chose to do for this baby was going to impact things in her family. Yes. That's yes. amazing to me. Mm -hmm. Then the baby sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you, she asked. Verse 8, yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl rushed home and called the baby's mother. Verse 9, take this child home and nurse him for me, said the princess. I will pay you for your help. So the baby's mother took her baby home and nursed him. Isn't that beautiful how this act of trusting in God and obedience to God that this mother mm -hmm. got her child back? She got her child back and she was being paid by the princess to take care of her own child. But yet she knew there was going to come a day when she would have to give this child mm -hmm. to an unknown world. Yes. Not like the Israelites, but the Egyptians, the Pharaoh's family, another family. Um, you know, and that's uncertainty. Like when you think about yes. that Nile River, she was uncertain. A snake could have bit that little baby boy. Mm -hmm. Anything, he could have drowned. Um, Verse 10 says, later when he was older, the child's mother brought him back to the princess who adopted him as her son. The princess named him Moses. For she said, I drew him out of the water. And that's the meaning of that. Oh, isn't that interesting? She yes. drew him out of the water. Imagine what that mother must have thought. You know, here she is putting her son 
by faith in the hands of God. She's putting her trust, despite all obstacles. I mean, Nile River's deep water. It's yeah. murky. It's dark. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anything he could have been attacked by. But look how God protected Moses and his mother and his people in their future with his life. He had a purpose for what seemed to be an unplanned circumstance. Right. It was very well planned. Mm -hmm. Very well planned, in fact. And can you explain to our viewers a little bit about the parallels in your story um, that parallel kind of with this and trusting with God? Yeah, sure. Um, the part of this story in Exodus that I connect with the most is towards the end of the verse when it says that Moses' mother then gave her son back to the princess. Mm -hmm. In those words, you find two things. You find sacrifice and you find hope. Mm -hmm. So good. how it relates to me is there got to a point when, um, you know, I was a young mother and I was working and, you know, finishing school and my son was maybe two or three years old that I just felt like I had to do something different. And it was not necessarily looking at the child that it was a mistake, but looking at having a baby as a blessing. And that's how Moses' mother felt. That's right. In the book of Exodus, so much that she made the sacrifice and gave her child back to, like you said, this unknown source. Mm. But then look what happened. Moses turned out to be one of the most influential people in Something the Bible. Like and yeah. it's like God is saying that, you know, this is, this is my son, this is my child, and there is a value on that life, mm -hmm. and I do have a plan for him. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. You know, isn't it so interesting, mm -hmm. too, you know, how that staff was used as a tool in front of Pharaoh mm -hmm. to display God's strength and glory to free those enslaved Israelites? And the very Egyptian authority that once his mother feared would take his life was the very thing that he overcame by the power of God. So sometimes in the situation that you're in, right. you know, the, the biggest thing that you're fearing may actually be the obstacle that you overcome in your life that you never would have overcome if right. you wouldn't have been in that place. Right. You know, yes. so yes. I, I just feel like, you know, um, you knew that you had come so far. I did. And, you know, explain a little bit on how you realized, okay. you know, you needed something beyond yourself. Okay. Um, I was at a point where as a young woman, in my head, I had all these life plans and all these things that I wanted to do with myself. Right. But my priorities with that and my priorities with being a mother they weren't matching up very well mm -hmm. and because there was this huge disconnect in my life and I was feeling so needy mm -hmm. and I was wanting so bad to find that affirmation that I allowed myself to get lost in a place where I didn't know what was up, what was down, what was left and right. And what was left with Brittany. You know, you yeah. get to a place where you're so focused on how you're perceived mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. from those that you're around right. that that becomes your value. And I feel yes. like so many of the young girls yes. that we meet, their value is by how they're perceived by others, how they're accepted by others. Um, that becomes their strength. But yeah. the, the lie of it is it destroys and steals their identity it and their self-esteem. Until you does. get to a place where, like you were in. Right. You feel like you just, you don't have anything left. And I struggled with that too, with the finding out where my identity was and just wanting to be loved and mm -hmm. just wanting to feel whole so, so desperately. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you would do anything mm -hmm. 
to be in that place. I feel like so many of the young girls that I speak to, they feel dirty. Yeah. They feel worthless. Mm -hmm. They don't feel valued. Mm -hmm. They've had things happen to them that make them feel like their life doesn't matter, especially the value of um, their sexuality because it's been stripped right. from them. They don't, they don't know that, that there's a part of them that God created in his image and in his likeness for his glory, mm -hmm. for his purpose, and they throw it away because they're scared. They've lost their identity. You know, um, there's a part here in, in scripture that I want to go to that I feel like parallels with what you've gone through. And, you know, the number one thing parents, as adults, you know, grandparents, children, children of unplanned pregnancies, we need that hope. We do. We need that hope. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. Mm -hmm. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. sanctuary. And then there's Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. You know, when I think about your situation those were like waves of denial and were, waves of anger mm -hmm. and waves of loneliness coming at you mm -hmm. but god and his word were that anchor that was that stronghold in a mm -hmm. he was like that strong tower that for you to say okay i need something bigger than me yes. i need someone that's going to be able to take me where i can't take myself mm -hmm. right it had gotten to a point um where I became so far from the Brittany that I was that I that I knew I couldn't take myself out. And it was at that point that I knew I needed a miracle is the only way that I could think about it at the time. Because you felt like I should just end this? Because there's yeah. no value here. The I value don't. was very, very low. And it had been, like you said, just stripped away because of social norms and the new you know world view that you're exposed to so I just I felt like that I couldn't do it I couldn't do it by myself anymore and that I needed a miracle you did you needed yes. a miracle mm -hmm. you know I want to jump into the book of Revelation mm -hmm. you know we talked about Moses being put into a basket in the Nile River right. and I love the parallel with with the river of God yes. and um, in Revelations chapter 22 it says then the angel showed me a river with the water of life clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb verse 2 it flowed down the center of the main street on each side of the river grew a tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit isn't that funny we're in December <laughs> here with a fresh crop each month the leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I like to think of us as trees. Our life is like, a, you think of a family tree, and you think about different families in your life, and so many of them have characteristics about them that right. impact people, and they bring mm -hmm. healing. They do. Impact them. Yeah. Um, verse 3, no longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of, and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him, verse 4, and they will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads, and there will be no night there, no need for lamps or sun, for the Lord will shine on them, and they will reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Verse 6, Then the angel said to me, Everything you have heard and seen is trustworthy and true. The Lord God, who inspires his prophets, has sent his angel to tell his servants what will happen soon. You know what I love? In the beginning, we talked about nothing takes God by surprise. Verse 22 in um, Revelation says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. You can't take God by surprise. You can't surprise God with a situation because he's the one that wrote your book. 
He knows every chapter in your book. He knows every chapter yes. that you've been through. And he knows the end from the beginning. He's the mm -hmm. author and the finisher of your faith. Yes. He knew you would come to him. Mm -hmm. He knew that there'd be a day when you would take that step mm -hmm. in your situation that would bring you to a place right. of humility. Do you yes. want to capture that? Yeah. Um, there was a time when I just knew that I had to surrender myself to Christ. and. It was like giving up this internal struggle mm -hmm. and I just yeah. I had to let go of the rock and the identity and all these things that were weighing me down weighing me down and then it was like I knew mm -hmm. that I was made in God's image That's good. and that there was a value and that if you cling to him wholeheartedly no matter what your situation is you mm -hmm. will be okay and you have even told me that your situation mm -hmm. as difficult as it was yes and I want to be very protective over your situation and your, your child and, mm -hmm. and your family mm -hmm. and his family. There was a point where you had come to Christ where you realized God has taken me yes. to this place where I can release it to him right. so that he can complete the work right. even in my son's life. And that's yes. a beautiful place. Thank you. I just want to thank you for sharing all that God's brought you through. You have a beautiful faith in Him. And I want to thank you for joining us again today on Wherever He Leads. We pray that you and your family will come to have the peace, the hope, and the joy in this season that can only come from a deep relationship in Christ Jesus. We thank you and we hope you join us again. Have a beautiful and blessed Christmas season with your family. Brittany, I'd like to thank you for joining us today on, on this episode of Wherever He Leads. I enjoyed hearing how God has touched your life and transformed it, and you have such a beautiful faith. Thank you. You know, something that I've realized throughout this entire situation is that God doesn't call us to be comfortable, but rather in those situations that challenge us, are meant to draw us to him That's and by allowing us to see ourselves you know as we really are and like you had mentioned earlier that humility mm -hmm. so I would just like to inspire you to come humbly before God this season and I want to thank you for joining us again today on wherever he leads and our prayer for you and your family is that you will enjoy the peace the hope and the love that only Jesus Christ our rock and provide. Have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us today on Wherever He Leads. If you'd like to contact us in the near future, you can reach us by calling area code 563-556-5250 and go to extension 3. Or you can reach us on the web at www.clarityclinic.com.